Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the first Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Puerta. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather in this season of Lent to reflect on our journey with Christ. Where are we? Have we made peace with our Lord? Have we reconciled with our brothers and sisters? All of those times we've not reconciled, not forgiven, we ask for forgiveness. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to reconcile us to yourself and to one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You came that we might have a new and abundant life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow an understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons, with him, behold, I establish my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. And never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I set my bow in the cloud and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth, when I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All your paths, O Lord, are mercy and faithfulness for those who keep your covenant. All your paths, O Lord, are mercy and faithfulness for those who keep your covenant. O Lord, make me know your ways. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. Pass, O oh Lord, a mercy and faithfulness for those who keep your covenant. Remember your compassion, O oh Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. In your merciful love, remember me because of your goodness, O oh Lord. 
all your paths, O Lord, are mercy and faithfulness for those who keep your covenant. Good and upright is the Lord. He shows the way to sinners. He guides the humble in right judgment. To the humble, he teaches his way. Of O Lord, all and faithfulness for those who keep your covenant. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and preached to the spirits in prison who formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Christ, King of eternal glory. Live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel. According to Mark. At that time, the Spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We're told today, in the gospel, the Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. It's amazing that Mark treats the temptations of the Lord in such a brief manner. He takes two sentences to do it, while people like Matthew and Luke take 11 verses to elaborate on what the temptations are, and how Jesus overcame them. What I think the scriptures are inviting us to reflect on today is not what Jesus' temptations were, but what ours are today. You see, I think that at some point in our lives, we all end up in the wilderness, in the desert, where we face not Satan, but ourselves, our own weakness, our own brokenness. When you take money from someone, either because you're desperate or just because you can, you're in the wilderness. 
when you drink so much that you wake up next to a stranger and you don't know how you got there, you're in the wilderness. When you're waiting in a clinic or a hospital to have an abortion, maybe not your first, you're in the wilderness. When you're too afraid to have an HIV test, because you know that with your last sexual partner you didn't practice safer sex, you're in the wilderness. When your partner or your children use makeup to hide the bruises on their faces, you are in the wilderness. Maybe you haven't had these particular experiences, but I'm sure that with some reflection, your own wilderness moments will come to mind. When we find ourselves in the wilderness, in the desert of our own failure, we are forced to confront ourselves and to acknowledge our own weakness. Like Jesus, when we confront our temptations and our failures, we can emerge from that counter strengthened. This is because we also encounter God in our wilderness. We encounter the God who loves us, who heals us, who forgives us. We encounter the God who reminds us that even in our deepest desolation, we've not been alone. That has been walking there besides us and sometimes even carrying us on his shoulders. Jesus, in his time in the wilderness, learned deep truths about himself, his God, and his relationship with God. It was only in facing those temptations and overcoming them that he was able to be who he truly was and to accept his mission from the Father. The Gospel of today concludes, after John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the Gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the good news. Lent is our time in the desert. It is our time of fulfillment when we recognize that God is with us in our brokenness and that he wants to heal us. God wants us to turn to him, to believe in him, and to love him. Let us now together profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In this time of healing and renewal, we bring to the Lord the needs of the world and our own.
We pray for our country in this time of COVID, that the Lord will bring to eternity all those who have died, that he will comfort those who mourn and give strength and courage to those who remain. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all healthcare workers who care for the sick. We pray for those who are searching for effective vaccines against COVID and better ways of treating those who are sick. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for an end to the scourge of corruption, that those who steal from the poor will face the consequences in this life and God's judgment in the next. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for ourselves that we may have the courage to look at the wilderness moments of our own lives and the faith to place them in God's hands for forgiveness and healing. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord God, in our weakness and in our need, hear our prayers. In your mercy, give us the gift of healing and forgiveness and newness of life in you. We ask this and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this prayer to offer. Through to the earth and work of human hands, that become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. With the mingling of the salt and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, to humble himself, to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Through to the vine and work of human hands have become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, God, we please with these gifts we offer you with humble, contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands with the praise and glory of God's name for our good and good for God's holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. We ask this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you gave life to all things and make them holy, and you never stop gathering a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we've brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup filled with wine, and again, giving you thanks and praise, he said the blessing, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all people so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the, the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, our husband, with your apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, with Bodhitlachale our Bishop, Duncan Zaki, his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family that you have gathered here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For it is through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Almighty God, renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and love strengthened, we pray that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and to strive to live by every word that proceeds from your mouth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace, giving God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.